One, two, three. Hey, bud. That was nice. What's up, guys? Dado here. Welcome back to the channel. This is my very first vlog and the very first ride on my BMW. Well, I've ridden this thing before. It's just the very first ride on camera. So many people have reached out to me over the years and said, Dotto, you should do vlogs on a motorcycle. And uh, we like a lot of the DIY, the riding, showing us the back roads, explaining stuff about motorcycles. And I figured it's time. Now, this is my third time out doing my first ride because the first two times I was not happy with the audio. I literally have like five microphones, uh, five different mics uh, setups that I tried. I really like the quality of the um, microphones that hook straight into the GoPro Media Mod. So with that being said, how many of you guys that are watching this channel have your own Motovlog set up? use GoPros or media mods or any kind of uh, combination of all of those things what do you use that you feel like is the best and also what do you recommend I would say that I am not afraid to spend a little bit of extra money for a good quality microphone or whatever setup that I need to I have the GoPro Hero 11 black it seems like it's doing plenty well for me and I also have the media mod I also have the GoPro adapter which I don't like running on a helmet because it's very bulky it's like a little like a little block it's pretty much the size of a freaking battery so I know that a lot of people run the Senna backpack wireless and then you just kind of um, run it with your uh, Senna you can do a Bluetooth wireless setup but that just seems like a royal pain in the ass because the older go I think there was like one GoPro where they made the backpack for and then they got away with it so my concern right now is getting the highest quality audio that I can <clears throat> before you mention it I do have a, a really nice zoom mic that I'll be using for external audio to do exhaust sounds and things like that that I'll be pairing with my GoPro audio and I do not have that on board right now. I'm actually just trying to film my first ride, film my first vlog, and get decent audio for you guys. It is the windiest and coldest day of the year, and I'm on the damn motorcycle because I really want to get this video out, and I was so excited the first two times. There was so much cool stuff that happened. Look at that view. There was so much cool stuff that happened on the first two rides that I might actually include it in this video. I am on one of my favorite roads. This is a, what are you doing, bud? Okay, that's not how you uh, use the roundabout. Okay, I'm on one of my favorite roads in central Pennsylvania. This is, uh, I guess, going into Shermansdale, Pennsylvania, or towards uh, Duncannon area, I should say. And I like to call this the racetrack. These roads here are some of the windiest and most fun roads that are close to me that I can go and enjoy and not have to worry about traffic. Enjoy these beautiful views as you're seeing. Today is the 1st of November and I can't believe that I'm on a motorcycle. Yes, I can. Um, the weather is not very cooperative. They call for snow flurries today and it's been so freaking windy. But here I am, the roads are still somewhat clean and dry, and I am determined to get a really good first ride video with decent audio for you guys. So I hope you enjoy this. I'll try to make it short, simple, to the point, and enjoyable. Here we go.
right, so first things first, why did I choose to buy this BMW? Well, first of all, I've always wanted to own a BMW motorcycle. I have been excited about the S1000RR platform for years, the older S1000s and the new ones as well. I have always been a sport bike rider, although I work on all platforms and I do enjoy a cruiser or a sport touring or tracker or scrambler and all those bikes are really fun. I would gravitate towards sport bikes most of the time, but you know, I don't want to say with age things have changed, but as I get older, I love just enjoying the ride and not, you know, the speed isn't everything. And the sport bikes really weren't all about speed for me. It's also like the sound and the feeling of having that kind of power beneath you. But as soon as I started riding motorcycles that are more comfortable, like this one with uh, upright bars and a really comfortable seat, I realized there's so much more to riding where I can spend more than two or three hours on the bike without completely, you know, with my, without my wrists and my neck and, you know, my legs going numb. BMW began making motorcycles in the 20s and over the years some of the most iconic motorcycles that they built have used the air-cooled engine and you guys might know those as like the old school R-series motorcycles where you see the cylinder head sticking out the sides really cool exhaust on one on each side and they just sound incredible and I think what happened is a lot of the Japanese manufacturers started making really powerful and attractive motorcycles with really fun, um, you know, zippy and powerful engines. BMW was like, man, we need to do something in order to keep up with that, you know? And we need to build a, a cool platform where we get away from the air-cooled engine and start making these, uh, you know, water-cooled inline three and four cylinders and to kind of, you know, uh, keep up with the market, so to say. And the competition had already come out with these really cool bikes. And, you know, a lot of them really didn't, uh, a lot of the companies really didn't want to, so to say, steal off of each other. So they started making really unique bikes and really unique engine designs on their own. Now, BMW was kind of late to the game and they didn't want to copy like the Jap bikes, the inline four cylinders. So they had to come up with a really clever way um, to be part of the competition. So what they did was they came up with the uh, K100. What BMW did was they took a inline four cylinder. Buddy, you gonna get off my and tail? Jesus f***ing Christ. Probably a cop knowing my luck. What I'm going to do is try to pull over here and get out of his way because apparently he's in a hurry. And why, like, why are you tailing me? Why are you riding so close? Why are you driving your vehicle so close to the back of my tire? Because I can stop a lot faster than you can, buddy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over right here, let him pass me, and then I'm going to get his license plate number in case something happens. Because if something happens, I want it to be on camera. So when BMW was developing these engines, they initially thought about using carburetors. However, laying the engine on its side and having the cylinder head on one side, it would make it really complicated for them to run carburetors because those carburetors would then have to be mounted vertically and then have an intake that, you know, bent down to the cylinder head, which is very inefficient. That's why BMW was one of the first motorcycle manufacturers to have a fuel injected bike. Now, I believe that BMW used the mass airflow sensor and the injection unit essentially from one of their vehicles um, and engineered it to work on, on a bike. And 
surprisingly these things made a decent bit of power bmw engineers decided to slap a transmission right behind the engine and after that they transferred the power through a drive shaft to the rear wheel this is amazing because the power is instantly transferred from the engine to the trans and the drivetrain without any loss of power or lag or chain slap or you know issues that uh, belt driven bikes have very cool bmw essentially all you have to do to service the drivetrain on these bikes is lube the splines on the drive shaft and make sure that the fluids are up to the proper level for the drivetrain Because the cylinder head sticks out right off the side of the engine here, it's easy to service the spark plugs, the spark plug wires, the coils, and also the throttle bodies and the fuel injectors. Everything is literally hanging off right off the side. You don't have to do much. And even if you wanted to do a valve service, it's a very simple and fairly quick job. BMW began making the K-Series motorcycles with the K100, but they were very expensive, bulky, and also not very nimble because they were heavy. Once again, the engineers said, we should probably make an affordable bike in the same series that can compete with like, you know, the 600s and the 750s on the market, and then more people can afford them and ride them. That's when the K75 was born and they essentially chopped off the front cylinder, removed a couple of things that were really unnecessary, unneeded, and they also fixed a couple of things too. So the K75 was actually a more nimble bike because it was lighter and it had essentially one less cylinder. It also ran a lot cooler and it runs a lot smoother than the K100s because of the design that they did with the counterbalance crankshaft. Another impressive thing about these bikes is the fueling system. The fuel pump in this bike is so powerful and they run this pump essentially at a 100% volume, meaning the fuel is being pushed to the fuel rail at full capacity that it takes to run this bike at wide open throttle and the unused fuel from the rail gets returned right to the fuel tank now a lot of you uh, automotive mechanics and gurus know that this is how a lot of cars are made but not necessarily bikes and uh, BMW is like yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna run that pump a hundred percent all the time and just return the fuel that we don't use which is amazing because if you're doing any type of modification to these bikes you don't have to worry about fueling unless you're doing something extreme like a turbocharger one thing that really surprised me when i purchased this bike is the choke lever now this is a fuel injected bike and it has a choke lever right here and essentially all that does is open up the throttle and allow the bike to idle higher until it warms up. It lets it warm up a lot faster. I've only ridden this motorcycle a handful of times and I've already realized that this thing gets a lot of looks. When I ride my R1, I get an occasional thumbs up and that's about it. And I'm riding this thing and people are breaking necks and it's really strange, but I guess you don't see many cafe racer BMW K series bikes in town or around this area so that's kind of cool now you might be wondering Dotto why do you have a little blue key tag well this is the key to the bike it's an RFID tag it's a radio frequency ID tag that I wired in to work as my ignition I wave it underneath the fuel tank everything powers on 
and I'm ready to go. Um, <laughs> I believe it's going to be the next video that you guys actually get to see why I had to install that. I didn't really have to, but um, the choice was mine after an incident. So that's going to be a fun video as well. This is why I'm so excited to get the first ride out in order to show you the next video. And I kind of had to do it in that order. Anyways, let's see if this sucker will fire up. Starts right up. Ha <laughs> ha. That's my way of saying hello neighbors. Now some of the things that I've noticed as soon as I purchased this motorcycle is one, the front forks were leaking. And with that being said, the oil from the forks was leaking directly on top of the calipers, causing the brake pads to get really uh, slick and the front brakes didn't work. The next thing I noticed is whoever installed the exhaust uh, just kind of slid it over and there's about an eighth inch of a gap all the way around. So the exhaust kind of rattles and that's going to need welded. That's the second thing on the list that I would like to get fixed ASAP. Also the grips, they just spin, the throttle and the left hand grip, they both just spin in place. I don't like that, so I already purchased new grips for that. Another thing that I noticed shortly after purchasing the bike is the taillight. Now the previous owner put an integrated LED taillight on here and everything worked fine, but about second ride out, I realized that my running light was not working but everything else was it was just kind of getting really dim and it looked like the LEDs were burning out so that kind of sucked I ordered a brand new integrated LED taillight and the install is gonna be the next video I put that in and everything is kosher safety first so I cleaned up the front forks as much as I could until I get them rebuilt and I'm kind of keeping an eye on the fluid it doesn't leak very fast I did purchase new seals and new fluids so I'll be doing a rebuild here shortly on that so I can continue to ride it next up on the list the gauge cluster it does not work other than the tack turn signal indicators high beam and I think that's it it doesn't show me my fuel it doesn't show the speed and a couple of other things just don't work and I'm not okay with that so that's why I'm using my phone as a GPS unit it's also keeping track of how many miles I'm putting on the bike since I've gotten it uh, my average speed my the fastest uh, maximum speed and then you know it tells me things like which direction of travel I'm going in and the time which is really cool this is sitting on a quad lock phone mount i do plan on getting the um, charging unit for it so i can wire that in and have the phone charging while i'm riding which is going to be really nice i know i have a lot of motorcycle riders on this channel majority of you do ride or have ridden in the past or plan to ride for those of you who currently have the quad lock units on your bike can you run the charging unit and the anti-vibration dampener at the same time? Does it increase or decrease anything, like the height of the mount? Does it cause any issues? And if you guys tested it, how well does it work? I plan on buying that and I did read that it is capable of stacking. I just don't want to spend the money and do it and then find out that I can't have the anti-vibration dampener on there. This bike is so fun. You crack the throttle and it goes, there's literally zero hesitation. Shaft-driven bikes are so cool, and if you can execute the engineering of the engine and the drivetrain properly, shaft-driven bikes are so much fun. And if you haven't ridden a shaft-driven bike, get out there and do it. Find a demo day or a buddy that has one or something like that and give it a whirl. The cool thing about this platform specifically is the bike is so light and nimble, at least it feels super light, it has a very, very low center of gravity. The engine literally hangs at the lowest point of the bike. And obviously the shaft drive just makes it very snippy. 
<laughs> there's no lag or hesitation and if these are tuned properly they rip man so I plan on doing a couple of other things with this bike um, I need to tune and kind of just go over the whole thing and service it and then what I plan on doing is synchronizing these throttle bodies so I get a, rid of some of the hesitation that I've been feeling and also the bike is going to run hell of a lot smoother Most of the times when I ride these back roads, there's literally no cars around me whatsoever, zero. And today, when I decide to do my first ride, cars are just popping out. And that's pretty much unlikely on these roads, so I'm a little, I'm a little surprised to see that, but it's okay, I don't need to be going fast. So short story on how I acquired a bike, I wasn't really looking to purchase a bike necessarily I never really am but the beauty of it is sometimes when things come your way they just show up unexpected and knock on your door and in this case I was very happy to to purchase this a local BMW enthusiast actually owned this before me and he was posting pictures and reels of the bike and I'm like okay that's freaking cool man I'm like I'm gonna have one of those you know someday and the more I was looking at the content, the more I liked the bike. Then he called me and he's like, hey, so I got this bike and I got a garage full of cars and I'd hate for that thing to sit outside. So I know you said you might be interested, but uh, I may be ready to sell it. So I ended up going for a short ride on the bike, checking it out. And next thing you know, it's on the trailer, making its way back to my garage. I'm super stoked and I absolutely love this thing because it does not feel like it's a 91. It literally feels like it's two years old except for it has no electronic assists or anything like that. As you guys may know, I absolutely love old bikes. The more raw and simple the bike is, the better because I've ridden a lot of extremely modified or technologically advanced motorcycles specifically sport bikes and although they make the rider very comfortable and they make the motorcycle really easy to ride so to say and safe it takes the knowledge and the learning and the enjoyment out of the pure raw motorcycle uh, you know you have to learn each machine that you ride you have to get acquainted with the machine you have to sometimes tweak and modify the machine to your liking or to your riding style or to your body shape or whatever and having a bike that is simple and real um, and raw is very exhilarating and exciting so this thing is about as simple as it can get. It doesn't even have ABS. What do you guys think of these back roads in central PA? Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. This, this turn always comes up on me so fast and it's like a 90 degree turn, man. Gotta be careful. I think this time of the year is honestly my favorite to ride. Like I said, today is a bit chilly, a lot colder than most of the days uh, in fall here in Central PA, but I'm just enjoying myself so much and I'm bundled up, I'm very warm. My hands are a little chilly uh, with these gloves, but not nearly to the point where, you know, I can't enjoy it. The hell is he pointing at?
I saw the signs that says they got workers, but he's pointing to me and pointing to the ground. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not speeding. The truck in front of me is actually going faster. Who knows? He's like, bleep, whatever, bleep, for sure, not talking, today, but ah. I don't know sign language, but construction sign language is a lot more confusing. I like that guy's garage. Look at that. Woo wee. That big boy. Nice house, too. What's up, guy? Bet you he's got some cool toys in there. People with big shops, I'm like, man, they either have like a John Deere tractor collection or they have supercars or a helicopter. There's actually a guy in Mechanicsburg that has a private helipad and a helicopter at his place. And that's cool because this is not an area where people typically can afford or have a helicopter in their backyard. So I don't know the guy personally, but I, I've seen a helicopter at his place and I've seen him flying over the house. So pretty cool. you tell how much fun I'm having on this bike? Now, I feel like my R1 is a bit jealous because this is all I've been riding lately, but it's okay. You know, everybody's going to get their turn. It's okay. sunny too hard to see at times I'm not sure how that's coming across on the camera but should have threw a ND filter on for today there's a the natural spring right there coming out of that little pipe I think it's this, yeah, right here's the little little swan pond, I call it. Should probably continue my ride. As you can tell, I'm always like talking about something and it's like squirrel. And I'm not sure if you guys can hear the pops and crackles from this bike, but man, that makes me happy. I hope that I don't lose a lot of that when the exhaust is fixed because if that's the case I'm just chopping a damn exhaust off and running a straight pipe. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, the throttle. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, uh, I posted a story asking people if they can identify um, what the part was that I was holding. It was actually a part of my throttle and this has a chain inside. It looks like a little bicycle, tiny little bicycle chain. And when you spin the throttle, a little gear turns a gear in here that spins on this uh, rod that goes through here. And the chain is what pulls on this cable for the throttle. Super freaking weird, man, but I like it. If any of you own or have owned a K-Series motorcycle, drop a comment below and let me know how you like it and if you have any gripes about it. There's a really cool overlook right here on the right hand side and it's beautiful to see. And there's a lot of, um, they call them gaps up here or different mountains or um, they have all different names, look at that. So there's like Sterrett's Gap and I think there's a Deals Gap and um, I don't know what the rest of them are called, I can't remember right now, but they all have really windy cool roads to go up. And I, if you guys like this type of content, I'm going to do a lot more vlogs and take you along on some of the rides that I do because Central PA has some gnarly roads and some very, very beautiful scenery while you ride. It's not boring you'll know that I don't go on the highways very much and when I do it's boring unless I'm explaining something or something exciting happens the back roads just like the ones you guys are seeing right now is where it's at man so 
I typically ride solo or with one other rider, that's it. And then I avoid highways or inner cities where it gets really busy, like rush hour traffic. I plan on doing a lot more of these, uh, probably with some other motorcycles and also, um, you know, customers' bikes. So maybe I'll do like a short video of what I'm doing to the bike and then take it for a test ride and then talk about the bike a little bit. So try to cover a little bit of history about these things and some of the gripes or changes that I'm going to do to the bike. And I have really, really awesome build plans for this. Nothing like internals or anything serious like that, but I do have some awesome things uh, that are coming this winter and I'll be posting a lot of those videos for you guys. There is some things that I would love to change about the bike, but quite honestly, there's, there's a lot that I just want to leave alone. I bought this thing with the intentions of riding it and enjoying it and slowly doing stuff to it. And there was one unfortunate event that already happened and I got it on camera. Thankfully, nothing detrimental happened and I'm still here. As soon as I pull up to my garage, the weather breaks and the sun comes out. Thank you. I needed that. All right, guys. Until next time. Peace. Oh, yeah. One thing I forgot to mention while I was riding. Because this engine is mounted the way it is, here's the cylinder head, and then the uh, pistons go this way, and the crankshaft is right there. And the water pump is actually driven off the end of the crankshaft. And because the crankshaft is counterbalanced, it makes this bike run a hell of a lot smoother than its predecessor. Another neat thing about these bikes is they have a side stand and a center stand. And BMW made it really simple to put this thing on the center stand. You just simply put the side stand up, put this little thing down, right? And instead of trying to yank on this, they put this little lever here. You just pull the lever out and you're like, okay, the bike's up on the center stand. Now, they encourage you to use the center stand over the side stand, and you might be wondering, why? They want the engine to sit upright when it's parked, because when it's on the side stand, all the oil drains out, and it gets into the intake and stuff, and then it smokes whenever you fire it up. So, a lot of people don't like using a center stand, and I always try to keep this on a center stand when I'm not riding the bike. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to park this and get inside so I can thaw out a little bit and uh, plan out the next vlog. Oh yeah, don't forget. Support me at www.dotomadeshop.com. I'll put it right here. Um, I have an e-commerce store that I make a bunch of cool stuff. If you like to smoke um, cigars, smoke cocktails, like smoked whiskeys, beer, tequila, wine, check it out. I make custom cocktail smokers laser engraved lids, all that fun stuff. And a new product uh, on my website is a quarter inch thick um, acrylic uh, side stand pucks for the motorcycles. You guys should check those out. So anyways, um, all right, I'm really going. All right, for real this time. See you in the next one.